Okay, so I've got the rifle back again and I can't remember what the guy's name is, Paul I think it was. Um, he said, oh, well, we won't see you again until you come and buy another firearm office. So what it was implying was that it's all fixed and it's all going to operate fantastically and I'm not going to have any more screws breaking and it's going to cycle perfectly. Uh, whether that turns out to be the case or not, I don't know. But um, I'm really keen for this thing to work because I really like it. Like I like it a lot. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. But about five minutes ago, I've got a toot toot and uh, the postal delivery guy came and he's got some goodies. He's got some goodies for this, for the, for my CZ, CZ457. So I don't like unboxings, but oh, I'm so excited to have this stuff that I'm going to do an unboxing. So sorry about that. Might have to speed it up. So this is a scope. I was pretty pretty keen to have a look at this because um, so the scope is a. I'll show you the scope. Is a Nico Sterling, and it is the Hornet ED 10 to 50 by 60 with the HMD T reticle, made in China. My understanding is that it's supposed to have Japanese glass. Uh, don't know. Don't care where the glass is from as long as it's good. You know, so you've got a, a parallax adjustment wheel, which is pretty nifty. Keep it out of reach of children because it's danger. Small battery. And let's have a look here. So you've got a sunshade, which is nice. Quite a long sunshade. Very nice. You've got a booklet on it and you've got I don't know what that is that's reticle user manual you've got this thing which is some sort of adjusting tool and you've got that thing which is also an adjusting tool that that's obviously for the the ocular and the um, objective bells uh, you've also got a cleaning cloth and a hex key, very small hex key, which is probably for setting the zero stop, I'll assume. So let's let's take this out of the bag. Ooh, it's quite big. And it's got screws hanging out of it. Why is that? Okay. Why are they in there? I have no idea. That's a bit weird. <laughs> Well, you would have two screws hanging out of the uh, parallax. Oh, that's for the wheel. Okay, for attaching the wheel. So you've got caps, covers. And then, oh, yeah. Press it there. Oh, yeah. oh that just comes up. And the... Yeah, okay. Pretty snazzy looking covers. This is, so let's have a look at how, what kind of clarity we've got. We've got, let's sit on, let's sit on 10. Oh, it's quite stiff, which is good. That's 50. Let's have a look out somewhere. Yeah, that's nice. This is nice. This is nice. And, uh, there's the... Off. OK, 
Okay, so the battery must be upside down in there. So let's um, let's spin the battery over and see what the reti illuminated reticle is like. Oh, and there's no battery in there. Okay. Uh, is there a battery supplied? Does not look like it. So there's no battery supplied. Not in here, no. No battery supplied. Well, uh, I'll go and get a battery and put it in. Well, here's one. Here's one I prepared earlier. This one might be dead, I don't know. Let's pop it in there. I'm going to cross thread this. There we go. Oh, no. It's a bit of a mongrel. There we go. There we go, it's on. Increase the. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. The whole reticle is lit up. From the top, so right at the bottom, it's a little bit dull. Uh, let's switch that off. Switch it off, and I'll take the battery out because um, I don't need an illuminated reticle. Pop it out. Just full straight out. Good. It's a bit of a um, put it back on. Okay. Yeah, this um, oh, hat's in the way. So, what sort of a? Uh, oh yeah, from about there. Oh, so it's got a good eye relief. The the reticle is extremely fine and crisp. It's, it's, it's fine, but it's really easy to see. Um, I'm really excited. This is a really nice scope. It's got a 30 mil tube. Um, I think you've only got like 45 MOA up, up, down, and side to side. But um, it's, it's going on a 22, so you don't need a lot. It's a huge unit. It's a big unit. Um, so I'm really excited, um, as you can tell. Uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah, the sunshade. Yeah, okay. So the sh sunshade actually screws in, I think. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. And the cover screws in. Oh, wow. And so it's a 10 to 50. It's a 10 to 50 by 60. Make sure I don't cross thread this. 10 to 50 by 60. Okay. It's 10 to 50 by 60. The screws on. I never had a lens cover that um screwed on. That's um Quite impressive. Wow, look at that. That's huge. Like I said, it's a 30 mil tube. It's a 10 to 50. It's the, the yeah, it's very bright. Um, I would compare it to, I would compare it to, uh, Let's have a look out somewhere in a distance. That's, uh, that's parallax. So. It's um, quite stiff. Parallax is quite stiff. Let's set that to say 100. That parallax adjustment is quite stiff. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
That looks nice. Wow. I can't believe that. And you would guess how much this thing cost. You're getting a lot, a lot of scope for very little money. 600 bucks. These things are 600 bucks. Unbelievable. They used to be about a thousand and now they've gone down in price. I think because the the 10 to 50 diamond is, is their latest and greatest thing that everybody wants. I don't know, maybe, you know, this thing's not as popular now or what, I don't know, but for 600 bucks, wow. People say, yeah, it's made in China. Yeah, but you know, there's a lot of scopes out there made in China that are a lot more than that. All right, so that's the scope. Now, the rest of the goodies. And that Hornet, my understanding is there's a lot of guys, in particular in air gunning, uh, been interested in that, who shoot with a Hornet and win competitions with it. I'm not surprised, I'm really impressed with it. That's, um, I'm just going to have some tea. Yeah, it's not bourbon, it's tea. Nice tea. So, that's the optics side of things, although I'm still waiting on a 419 rail from Brandells, Australia. Don't know when that's going to arrive. But I might just mount the scope on, um, on the dovetail that I've got, that it comes with. <laughs> then there should be two things in here. And you can, I can see if they have opened it and then re-sealed it. Mm, it's two. Yep. So, I've got Oryx chassis. Yeah, yeah. Cut that off. I do like the Oryx chassis. Um, it's the most affordable, but um, it's really, really well made. Um, it's a one piece alloy unit. You know, you're not cobbling pieces together. Really? That's a bit ready. Still cast. Yeah, alright, so there's I'm gonna have to slice off a little bit of flashing here and there. But you've got to remember this is a very affordable piece of kit. And uh, to adjust that, what do you have to do? Really, oh yeah, just unscrew it. Okay. Um, yeah, so the Oryx chassis. I'm going to be interested to see how this fits. Uh, there's the chassis. Excellent. It's um, it's really nice. It's really nice. For some reason, people reckon they changed the pistol grip out. I have no idea why. I don't see any problems with that pistol grip. I mean, it's not like you're going to be actually firing semi-auto or anything. Really. The other thing. The other thing. The IBI barrel, 22 inch, one inch straight, 22 rimfire drop in CZ457. Stainless steel. Well, this says 16T. That's longer than 16 inches, that's 22 inches. So let's have a look at him. Pull him out of his uh, sock. If we can. Man, this, thing, this stuff's really hard to get off. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Let's have a look down it. Oh, yeah, that's clean. So these things are supposed to be hand lapped. Nice crown on it. Yeah. Wow. Uh, wow. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to pause it. I'm going to put it all together because. Apparently YouTube don't like seeing you putting shit together, and it's boring anyway. So okay, I'm back. back so, I'll tell you what happened. I put the rifle in, the, I put the barrel in the action. Now, the tolerance between the barrel and the action is, uh, it's pretty loose. So, yeah, that's, in fact, I don't know, you can almost sleeve it. Uh, so we'll see how um, that pans out. 
but I did tighten up the action to the specified torque which is 44 inch pounds hopefully it doesn't move around um, then I put the barreled action in the stock which is really easy to do it just slips straight in both both screws lined up it does come with the screws for it the Oryx chassis um, what else uh, and then I didn't think that I I thought I'd I'd, I'd got rid of my Area 419 rail um, when I traded in the MTR, the CZ MTR, and so I was despairing the fact that I was going to have to put a bullshit um, rim fire uh, rings on here for the meantime because it's a 30 mil tube. I do have 30 mil uh, rim fire rings that fit the rim fire dovetail. And I couldn't find ones that were high enough. The, the, the objective bell was hitting the striking the barrel because the barrel's so thick, it's one inch. Um, so, what happened? I, um, I wasn't sure what to do. And, uh, and I was sort of despairing of fact and like there's no way that my local uh, sporting store would have what I needed, no way. So I was, uh, I thought, oh well, I'm just going to have to show it without the without the um, scope, without the optics mounted. Well, just so it happens, I was looking for a rail for the bottom because I thought I ha I thought I had an M lock um, adapter, a M lock to um, to Picatinny adapter. And uh, I couldn't find that. I thought I'd had one, but I might be mistaken. And guess what I found? While I was looking for it, I found the Area 419 rail. So I'd, I'd actually ordered one from Brownells Australia, and I haven't even... I have no idea when that's coming. That could be, yeah, months away. Who knows? Because they're going to get it to the United States. I doubt if they've got any in stock here. So, don't care, because... I've got the Area 419. As soon as I put the Area 419 on, I put the rings that I wanted to use on, and sweet, yeah. So it's all complete. Um, the length of pull is, I suppose, the length of pull isn't short. The problem is that this um, ocular bell is so long. I mean, here's my 30 power delta. So that gives you an idea of the difference between the two scopes in size. <laughs> this Nico is a, is a monster. It is a monster. And that ocular bell, look how much longer it is and, and just bigger in diameter. So that hangs a lot close to your eye, um, which is not a seriously big deal, but um, this rail, I mean, with it's such a compact action, it's only a rimfire action, it's such a compact action that even though this um, 419 has got overhang, so I've got it at the two outermost, I've got the rings at the two outermost uh, slots, positioned at two outermost slots, Picatinny slots, and uh, I can't move that any further forward, I don't want to. I've got probably a millimetre to go, but yeah, I don't want to damage, possibly damage the, the scope. So, um, one thing about this scope, this wheel, so this um, parallax wheel, uh, there's two screws, and they give you, a, it's the tiny little hex, um, champ hex head screws, and um, I've already rounded one. Because, yeah, that, that, and I was, I didn't go crazy with it, and so hopefully I can undo that and possibly replace it. But I have heard complaints about uh, the mounting of the wheel on this thing. Um, so yeah, we'll see how we go with that. But I think you certainly do need it because it is quite stiff, like. Oh man, that's using that wheel. So you got that much leverage. That is stiff. All right, so that is stiff. So, um, but very positive.
everything's obviously it's brand new, so everything's quite stiff. Um, but the other thing is, um, I did have the shade on. I did the, the extra sunshade on, but I took that off because I I didn't want to have too much mass hanging over the front there because yeah, there's not that much holding that thing up. Um, I don't think you need it anyway. I've never used the sunshade ever. Um, maybe special circumstances, but yeah. Um, so what else can I say about it? Uh, now. This Friday, which is in a couple of days, today's Wednesday, there's a competition on and I fly out for the next job and I won't be back for a few weeks, but at least a couple of weeks um, on Sunday I go. So my only opportunity is this Friday or I, there are a couple of other ranges that I can go to, but they're a lot further away. I can go to Carmine, which is in the other direction, it's north, um, or I can go to, I think it's Woodstock, uh, near Townsville, which is even further past Townsville, um, on the way to Charles Towers. Uh, I'd prefer to go to Curramine, it's much friendly, it's a really, it's a smaller range and, and really, I've, I've always had a good time when I was there. Um, I don't know, there's a few factors involved to wait and see, so if I do go, I'll get to test this beauty out and I'll also get to have a go with this thing again there, with the horrible trigger. Um, hopefully if, if that thing works fine I'll have a go at playing around with the trigger because it is horrible. Uh, the tr meanwhile, so I, I, I did order a, um, a Timney for this but they're not in stock. Um, now, I might, and I, I might get one put on back order, but the trigger on this is has got the the spring kit. I think it's a a, a brand new spring kit. And I'll, I'll put the lighter spring in it, so it is a very very light trigger. Um, but I would like to have the Timney in it, and just just to see exactly what that's like. I don't know, so. I think it's a bit too posty waiting there. So, until then, see ya.